It's Weird Wednesday. <laughs> Spooky. Hello, Misty. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Uh, Hello. You, want, you want to hit them with what our Weird Wednesdays is about? I feel like Weird Wednesdays is yours. It's kind of I like feel, a you thing. I get very excited because yeah. I like weird stuff and I like knowing more about weird stuff. So today is about the Paris Catacombs, which is the, it's all of the caves and tunnels underneath Paris. And the they're lined with anything skulls. special. Skulls. Yeah. Of six million people. Six million skull <laughs> tunnels coming up right after we clap our silly little hands. Are we ready to begin? Good morning. My name is Misty. Come on, Ike. It's time. We would be honored if you would join us. The greatest adventure of all time. Yeah. We just become best friends. Yep. Come on. Let's get in the character. Welcome back to uh, Skullmageddon. That's all I got off the... Skullma... Skullmania. 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 Sunday, Sunday, Sunday at the Metrodome. It's Skullmania. Skullmania. Uh, Houston, we're going to need more skulls. (laughs) What's the first thing that you think of when you think Paris? The Eiffel Tower, which we just did an episode on. We did. It was actually like three weeks ago at this point. And then the second thing I think of is... Uh, when I was there in London for work, how one of my coworkers tried to convince me that we just jet, oh, like take the the channel t- over to Paris for dinner and back, and I was like, eh. I mean, you can, but it'd be a squeeze. It'd be a squeeze. And then if we yeah. got stuck in Paris, it'd be hard to explain why we didn't show up for work the next day. That's a very good point. Yeah, very good point. Well, a lot of people think like you know they think of the Eiffel Tower and the City of Lights and romance and culture and snails, you know, 18th century corpses underground. Yeah. <laughs> so the Paris catacombs. Um, Should we clarify one thing real quick? Yeah. A lot of people. It's a decade ahead, or it's a century ahead. So the 18th, 18th yeah. century is right. the 1700s. Yeah. A lot of people need help with that. Oh. Okay. People. People. I didn't know that. People on my same wavelength or better. Well, you just knew it. Well, I recently. <laughs> you were that t- that day I'm years old when you so, found out. Not right now. I'm okay. just saying. Last so, week. Just to clarify. Last week. No. <laughs> Today. Um, <laughs> they cover 320 kilometers of tunnels, uh, some still unmapped, 20 meters under the city of Paris. Whoa. They have been used for parties, movies, <laughs> dining, and much more. <laughs> it's so weird. Here, dine among the skulls of the dead. Of the dead. I mean, I would do that, but I'm not normal. You are definitely like well, normal people would not be like, let's go and have dinner with the skulls of the dead. Um, I'm trying to pull up a picture. I got to get rid of this ad first. Here's uh, here's a picture of yeah. some of the skulls. What do you think those other things are like tailbones? Bones. Yeah, um, probably bones. like leg bones. Is connected think. to the uh, bone femur. Bone. But I don't know. <laughs> I, I need to admit something. You don't know bones? My entire life, I have never learned the words to that song properly. Oh. I Anytime someone starts singing it, I go, neck bone! Because <laughs> I just don't know. You're a neck bone. I don't know. Um, okay, so let's find out like where where the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> oh, we changed the words to that earlier today. <laughs> the spiders eat your hair. It's just not going to make any sense to anybody else. <laughs> But it, you can, it does go, let the spiders, spiders eat your, your hair. hair. Let, let the spiders, spiders eat your hair. hair. I think that's going to end up in a promo one it, day. It probably is going to have to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. This, they, this, the tunnels became mm-hmm. famous, a place for cataphiles. Cataphiles? Cataphiles. What does that per, mean? Young Parisians who like to explore the tunnels and escape from the outside world. Although it's been illegal to enter the catacombs without a guide since 1955, Mm -hmm. it was possible to find other ways in up until the late 1980s, including through buildings on top of the tunnels. Yeah. So do you want to know where the bodies came from? I do. Okay. Um, The reason that the catacombs exist is because in the 18th century, which was actually the 1700s, Mm -hmm. uh, cemeteries were overcrowded and bodies weren't buried properly. So this just ca- this caused a lot of disease to spread through the city. Um, it seems pretty dark, but they had <laughs> been digging an underground 
and gave up on the plans of building anything underground and decided to just use that to bury the dead. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> there were a couple of different plagues that happened round about the same time. Like it was just kind of one thing after another where a whole lot of people were dying at the same time. Six million is a lot. <clears throat> and it's more than they're dying right now of the thing that's happening outside. We've got what? Three, three million at this point? Not all in one city. Good point. Yeah. True. That is worldwide. Um, yeah. We could lose a few more out of LA, LA though. Traffic's <laughs> kind of building back up. Traffic's Sorry. pretty gnarly again. Mm. Woo. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so it may have seemed very dark to have stuffed millions of the dead underground, but it was practical for a city that had such rapid growth to have a resting place for all those that had passed. This was the only solution to such a major public health threat. Um, but who's like taking all the meat? off the bones no they just threw them down there and let them rot and then they just got neatly stacked oh no that happened much much later okay so after just, the after they had all decomposed decomposed and stuff. so yeah they threw them underground they threw six million people underground and then they were like what are we gonna do with all these bones and then they started making tunnels with the boneheads yeah bone i never thought boneheads. Of, what i never thought of that before right that now guy your skull is a bonehead. Uh huh. Your bonehead. Whoa! <laughs> oh I'm, I swear I'm not this stupid. <laughs> oh my goodness! Did you ever have that active thought? Skulls no. are boneheads. No, I mean it's not. I ever... called you a bonehead a thousand times, and I never thought about your skull once. Yeah, I. It's still. I'm just like, no, okay. Yeah, it's a bone in your head. <laughs> I just got my <laughs> brain melted. Uh, can, can I take your skull and put it in the Paris Underground then? Sure. Okay. If you, As long as you find a guide, you can't go down there alone. I, yes. Every time that I have wanted to try and take one of those tours, they've always been completely booked. Like it is very hard mm. if you don't book it in advance to get in on one of those tours because they only take a certain amount of people down. Yeah. Um. So here's a little bit more about that. <clears throat> Paris authorities chose an easily accessible site that was at the time located outside the capital. There was a tomb quarry under the plain of Montregu. Uh, it had been in operation since the 15th century and then abandoned. These quarries were a small part of a labyrinth that extended under the city for approximately 800 hecta acres. Hectacres. Hec we learned about how big those are we, on yeah. our water park episode. Yeah. Um, preparation of the site and the organization of bone transfers were entrusted to some French guy, um, <laughs> the inspector of the Department of General Quarry Inspection. Um, I just want to know what how six million people like added up to being dead. I don't know. So I'm gonna. While you do that, you yeah you remember the cataphiles we were talking about? Yeah, talk to me about that. Uh, one of the cataphiles' more astounding stunts was the creation of an entire underground cinema, complete with seats, a bar, and a projector. I want to go this, so bad. It was discovered in a cavern beneath <sighs> the 16, 16th Aeron Descentment in two thousand four. Authorities were mystified as to how and by whom it had been built. When police returned to find out where the electricity powering the cinema was coming from, they found the lines cut and a note saying, do not try to find us. The mystery, the mysterious allure of the cataphiles lives oh, on. Oh my goodness. I know you're going to like that one. I love that so much. Secret movie theater. Oh, I want to go to the secret movie theater among the skulls. Why don't you just build one in your house? Just start stacking skulls in your living room. Where am I supposed to get skulls? I got you. Okay. <laughs> Allegedly. Okay. So here's where I am kind of getting the impression of where the bodies came from. This wasn't just, it, they didn't just start to build it in the 1700s. It had been around since like the 1500s. So like, you know, some, some, some hundreds of years, those bodies added up. Over and over. Hmm. The f <clears throat> yeah. Um, the 14th century, actually, is the first underground quarry. Yeah. And I'm then sure they just it, kept adding bodies. It, it probably wasn't just one day, six million people dropped dead. It was probably over the course of a long time. It was over the course of, yeah, like 
400 years. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to do the math? <laughs> Real quick. Yeah. 400 years divided by 6 million. Mm-hmm. How many people is that? Let's find out. Oh, and they moved all of the bones from all of the other cemeteries in Paris down there as well. That kind of helps. Yeah. They started to close all of the cemeteries and move people into the underground. That's 15,000 people a year. That, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. That's not abnormal at all. Yeah. All right. Which is 41.6 people a day. 41 people in the whole city of Paris that pass away Every a day? Every single sure. day for 400 years. Sure. Okay. I mean, you're going to have times when that's lower, and you're going to have times when that's a lot higher. You know, flu seasons, things like that. Like, people drop. Uh, I got three Some more. Plagues. Three more interesting facts. Tell me. Um, the story of a crocodile living under Paris is often considered an urban myth, but it is true. In 1984, workers discovered a two-year-old crocodile living in the sewers. Capturing it must have been one of the more unusual tasks undertaken by the firemen called upon to capture it. The crocodile uh, lives in an aquarium in Vans, Brittany, and is an enclosure designed to look like a Paris sewer. He probably got stuck down there. He didn't even want to be down right? there. Right? Um... I got one more if you're not if you don't have one. Well, I have one about people that have actually died down there. More not death? like dead before they got put down there. Like like <laughs> recent people getting like lost down there? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um there's a, a crypt called the Crypt of Saint Cecilia. Um it's an underground crypt. So Okay, no. Not people that like Got thrown down there. Um, if an underground tomb with millions of bodies isn't enough to freak you out, here's another creepy story. Philibert Aspart. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like Aspart. Aspart. Butthole. <laughs> <laughs> he was a doorkeeper at the Val de Grace Hospital during the French Revolution. He entered the catacombs in 1793 and never resurfaced. His body was not discovered until 11 years later. His cause of death was undetermined. His final resting place, the catacombs. Was he still alive? An even darker fact, he was found right near the exit. No, he was found 11 years later dead. Dead. Right by the exit. I'm just messing with mm-hmm. you. He was dead. Did you um, ca- get that dead? Get, get dead? Did you get the part? Co- where, dead copy? Did I stutter <laughs> on the dead part? Copy on the dead. Uh, that's right. Affirmative on the dead. Um, the Phantom of the Opera's Real Life Lake. Is what this is called. In what? Gaston Leroux's novel La Fantomie de la Pra. Proud of you what? for that one. <laughs> thank you. Yay. Thank wow. You. The fictional. Oui, oui. <laughs> 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 the fictional architecture of the fam. Pally Apparel House <laughs> builds a secret underground palace for himself with a subterranean lake. <laughs> while there is no place the where there is well, sorry. While there is no palace, the lake actually exists. When the opera house was built in 1862, draining the swampy foundations proved difficult, so the real architect, Charles Grenier, created a cistern to store the water. Today, Paris fire fi- firefighters <laughs> do their underwater training there. <laughs> <laughs> I train under the water. My, my French American accent it's, is monafique. I don't hate it. I'm not going to lie. Don't hate it at all. I got one last thing. Okay. You tell me, and then I got one after that. Paris mushrooms. What? You don't do mushrooms and climb down there. That's a bad idea. Champignon de Paris, <laughs> other words known as Paris mushrooms, can be found in every supermarket in the capital. But few people know that they were once grown by farmers working in the abandoned quarries under Paris in the 19th century. Some accounts say this tradition was begun by deserters from Napoleon's army who were hiding underground and needed to grow food. By 1880, more than 300 mushroom farmers were literally operating underground. Sadly, most Paris mushrooms sold in France today are not Parisian, but grown in China. I'm on shrooms. 
That's true. What do you got? Okay. Let's take us out. Well, so you asked me about how they got like the the decorative, you know, that they put them in certain ways. Yep. And so Oh. Oh, yeah. Show a picture of that she is. That's a cylinder of skulls. <laughs> it's called the skull barrel. Skull is barrel. what they call it. <laughs> that, there's my skull barrel. <laughs> there is my skull barrel. The reason they call it that is because in the beginning, the bodies were just thrown down into the crypt via a cart. Um, then somebody decided to get creative. The people that were working in the catacombs decided to start displaying the bones in decorative shapes. They actually thought that it would make the atmosphere lighter for them to work in if the bones weren't just scattered all over and there was some organization. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> then they started to build them into ways that would attract tourists. There is a famous bone barrel holding up the top structure. Seems almost poetic that the dead are being used as a pillar to hold up the ceilings. So the bones are now what hold, hold the whole thing up. It would make sense to me that something structurally supportive is holding it up and the bones are kind of decorative around it. Uh, in the 14th century? Sure. When it was built? And that's just what makes oh. sense to me. You and I are a lot smarter than the average bears. I don't know about that. We are. They are from, I mean, pa they are despite, from Paris. Despite your French accent. <laughs> it is not bad. Uh, that was horrible. It, was, it uh, is yeah, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do speak uh, a bit of American French, France. Uh, I'm ooh, it. Yeah, it was much better earlier. I, I don't know to, what happened. There. I have to do it while I'm reading. Okay. It, it, like I said, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Roberts. Mr. Roberts. <laughs> and Doc. <laughs> and Doc. <laughs> Mr. Roberts and Doc. <laughs> Myself. We are saying to you, I will say adieu. 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 <laughs> I do say this. <laughs> I do say this. Later are battles. 